Hi class. What I'd like to do now is to introduce uh, one of my favorite subjects, which is shaping functions, which uh, go by a lot of different names like tweens uh, or uh, uh, unit generators. Um, but basically they're functions that alter how we can get from zero to one. Um, generally these tweening functions or uh, shaping functions uh, take a number from zero to one and produce a number from zero to one. Um, but uh, the number has been shaped in a way that gives it a kind of character. And that's what I want to talk about now. So let's begin with a very simple kind of display. Um, here is um, a gradient. And the gradient goes from pure black to white. And here's how I do it. Uh, I set up a canvas. Um, and I'm going to basically loop for every pixel from zero up to the width. And I'm going to create a number using the map function uh, which goes between 0 and 1, which is proportional to that uh, position from 0 to width. So I use the map function, and I say, uh, take this uh, number, which is counting across the screen, and its range goes from 0 to width. Produce for me a new number whose range goes from 0 to 1, and call that this parameter t. Okay, and I'm going to make a color, if you will, called cull a, or value from 0 to 255, which is the result of multiplying 255 times t. Now, it is true, I could have put 255 over here in the map function, but for reasons that we'll see soon, uh, I, I wanted t to be in this range from 0 to 1. Um, now that I have this number, which is linearly increasing from 0 to 1, multiplied by 255, uh, I can put it into the stroke call, stroke command, which produces a grayscale value, uh, in this case, a grayscale color. Uh, and I set the stroke and I draw basically 400 lines all the way across that go from black to white. Very good. Okay, so. What I want to show you now is how we can basically use a shaping function to alter the character of how we get from black to white. So um, let's draw a different set of lines. Um, I'm going to copy this code that I have prepared down here. And I'm going to say, OK, great. I got a new color, color B. And it's also 255 times t. But maybe instead of taking t, I will take this parameter and I'll square it. So I'll t, t times t. Now t is a number that goes from 0 to 1. So if we square it, well, when t is 0, 0 squared is still 0. And when t is 1, 1 squared is still 1. But in between, they're all different. Uh, if previously the value of t was 0 0.5, well, 0 0.5 squared is uh, 0 0.25. So numbers in between get pushed down. Basically, low values get pushed lower. Um, and now let's, um, let's run that. This is going to draw a set of lines that are uh, just, just below the other ones. So if I run this now, you'll see that, that uh, it still goes from black to white. But uh, before, where it was a half, half gray, now it's a quarter gray. So basically, it's been made darker. Um, let's try a different value. Instead of saying uh, t times t, we, we could try and cube it even, t times t times t. And now it still goes from black to white, but it's, it's even got uh, very little t sort of time to kind of get light. It's dark most of the time. Um, in addition to taking t squared or t cubed, we could take the square root of t. Um, that's the squirt command in p5.js. And if I do that, then I get something where it's lighter, but still goes from pure black to pure white. Um, now, how does that work? Well, uh, when you take the square root of 0, square root of 0 is 0. Take the square root of 1, square root of 1 is 1. But if you took the square root of 0 0.25, for example, that's 0 0.5. And so over here, about a quarter of the way across, it's already at a sort of 50% gray. OK, now, this kind of fiddling we can actually generalize. If instead of saying uh, the square root or t times t, I can use the pow function. And I can say, for example, take t to the, the 2.0 power. That's the same as squaring it. Uh, t to the 0 0.5 power is the same as taking the square root. And something we could do is actually link this to the mouse. I'll say, let's make it the mouse x divided by 200, which is half the width. When I do this now, I can actually make it interactive. If I'm halfway across, I get a linear gradient. If I go over here, then I'm basically raising it to a higher power. And if I go over here, I'm raising it to a lower power, uh, something less than one, which produces a root of some kind. OK, so now you can see I'm able to alter the character of how I get from 0 to 1. And this is one of the simplest shaping functions. It's a very simple exponential uh, sort of exponent, basically taking, taking this parameter t, uh, a number from 0 to 1, and um, raising it to a power. As we'll see uh, in the moments just ahead, there are a huge panoply uh, of you know, so many hundreds of wonderful and, and really characterful different kinds of shaping functions. Um, and this is just the simplest one, which is the easiest one to kind of pull out.
in a hurry. All right. So what I'd like to do now is to introduce you to an incredible grab bag of different uh, and very characterful uh, shaping functions called p5func, which is an extension library for p5.js by Luc Dubois from NYU. Um, and if we take a look at p5func, which you can find from the libraries page of p5.js.org, if we go there, here's uh, his page. You can download a zip file and so on. And the way you're going to use it is you're going to bring in um, the p5func.js file or p5min, uh, p5func.min.js uh, into uh, your one of your projects, which could be at the editor or it could be on your own computer. So here's um, uh, a project I've made uh, that uses p5func, and we can see over here on the um, left-hand side that uh, I've got four files. I've got uh, p5funcmin.js. That's a sort of very compacted, minified version of p5func that I've downloaded from Luke Dubois' site. Um, I've got my sketch, which is here. We'll be talking about the guts of that in a moment. Um, over here in the index.html, I make sure that both of these uh, things are brought into play. So uh, over here, you can see that I've got uh, the script that requires p5func.min. Uh, and I also have my sketch. And then, of course, I also have p5.js itself over here. So let's go over, head over to the sketch. Um, let's not worry about too much, the too much about the code right now. I want to talk about what's going on over here. I want to sort of introduce you to the kind of the world of shaping functions. Right now, we have the sort of the the uh, the, the the null operator of of, uh, of function generators. It's 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 the, it's the identity operator of a linear in and linear out. So a number comes in across the bottom here, and it gets sort of interpreted by this kind of curve, which is in this case straight. And then so a number comes in and it produces the same number out. What's going on here is that this is just going back and forth, back and forth, and it produces this um, dot, which is going back and forth. It also produces this linear gradient here to sort of show the effect of this, not only in movement uh, on the lower left uh, column here, but also in terms of grayscale gradients. So now we can use the, uh, the arrow keys to uh, switch between these. So here's another one. And in this case, this is sort of a quadratic uh, uh, shaping function. It basically takes the parameter t and squares it. So whatever's coming in is squared, and so low values are pushed down. A value of 0 0.5 is pushed to 0 0.25, for example, and you can see that it's suppressed low values. And it, it changes, note how it changes the character of the movement, right? It's sort of slow at the bottom and fast at the top. And notice how over here it's darker earlier. We can kind of keep looking at these things. And now we have a different kind of shaping function with um, what you might call an ease out, right? It sort of slows down at the top, um, but is fast at the bottom. It almost looks like a bouncing ball, and it's actually not too different from the physics that govern one. Um, so let's look at a couple more of these. Um, these S-shaped ones are called sigmoids, um, and they basically suppress low values but boost high values. Uh, and the effect of them is to sort of enhance the contrast of a signal. Um, so the light values get lighter, the dark values get darker. Uh, and you can also think of it as an ease in and an ease out. Uh, if you are familiar with animation. Let's look at a few more of these. Um, there's many. Actually, this contains about 100. Uh, and there are a few with some bugs, so forgive me if you see something with a bug. Um, but I'll show you some of my favorites. A couple of them do go outside the range 0 to 1, and there's a lot of arguments about whether that's actually kind of kosher or not. Um, there are certain kinds of applications where it's, it's fine to go outside the range of 0 to 1, like if you're animating, you get kind of a squash and stretch style overshoot. Um, you want to sort of anticipate the movement. But if you're producing uh, audio, uh, you don't want to necessarily go outside the range of 0 to 1 because you could be doing digital clipping, which can sound really nasty. I want to head over and find uh, the Gompertz function. It's a very lovely function. It's quite flexible. As you'll see, some of these have parameters that allow them to kind of be modulatable and, and, and you can sort of adjust their character. This one's very simple. It's called double linear and it, it kind of has an elbow, but as you can see, I can kind of uh, provide two different slopes with a kind of corner where they meet. Um, the one that I want to find right now is this is probably my favorite one the double exponential sigmoid. And so this uses a pair of exponential functions that meet in the middle and uh, it has a, sing a single parameter that controls it. Um, Different shaping functions may have different numbers of knobs that govern how they do their work. 
and some of them have no knobs, and this one has one. And this knob uh, allows you to shape this uh, pattern from anything from a straight, a straight relationship like you see here. This is just perfectly, you know, what goes in is what comes out, to uh, a really strong contrast where basically it's black and white. You know, anything less than 0 0.5 is set to black, anything uh, higher than 0 0.5 is set to white. But what's nice is that it produces adjustable contrast in between. It's a very useful function. Um, so there's many of these. This is one just like the previous one, but it has an adjustable center. In this case, I have one parameter that allows me to move the center, and another parameter that allows me to express how much contrast there is between those different parameters. Okay. I think I might leave it there. just want to say this is one demonstration of how shaping functions can be used. And it's important to note the way that it's being used to govern both motion and color, but what could be almost any other property. And in combination with the map and constrain functions, you can use this not just to get from the top to the bottom or from black to white, but from any value to any other value with some kind of grace or character or ease. So I want to give another demonstration now of these shaping functions and really show you how they can alter the character of how you get from one set of values to another. So this is a demonstration made by Luc Dubois who made uh, P5Funk. And what it's going to do is it's going to move a dot from one place to the next. And you're going to see some of the same kind of motion interpolation uh, that you saw in my little uh, XY plot demo just now. But you're also going to hear a pitch, and the, the tone is being generated by a, a real-time audio synthesizer in P5JS. And the pitch is going from one pitch to another, but it's being interpolated, the pitch is being interpolated through one of these shaping functions. So let's have a look and see what that looks like. Uh, there's this dot, and every time I click, the program is going to choose a different random shaping function to get from point A to point B. Okay, I hope that gives you a kind of a view about how you can kind of really articulate uh, transitions uh, using these shaping functions.